Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. Today we're going to demonstrate a couple of things. One is semi-automatic welding. Well, what does that mean? Well, I've got a flange here that I'm going to weld onto a tube, and, and I have several thousand of these to weld. So I've got an option. I can set these things up, and I can manually weld them, turn them, weld them, turn them, weld them, turn them, or I can put them on this little rotisserie thing here, this rotary turntable. We're, we'll talk about it in just a minute. But <clears throat> if you don't have one of these, uh, we're going to go ahead and demonstrate how to, how to weld this. And it, it's relatively simple. It's, it's fairly thin steel tubing to a heavier wall. Now the one thing you want to do is make sure that you concentrate just slightly on the heavier side. If you get too far away, then your weld starts falling. It flattens out on you. It doesn't want to grab up and create the fillet. So get a really tight arc, and I'm going to run probably no more than a, a half an inch run at a time. Then I stop, rotate, reset, and do it all over again. But you can figure what the time is, and, you know, I mean, we're talking, this is going to take me four or five minutes to weld total. Um, so let's, let's get all the gear on. I'm going to make this weld. Then I'm going to go to the semi-automatic. Okay, I've got uh, I've got a couple of tacks in this thing right now. I'm going to run this at uh, oh I don't know probably somewhere around 80 amps. You'll see me oscillate maybe just a little bit, and I'll concentrate a little longer on the base plate. The base plate's much thicker, and you can see it's I mean it's welding up nice. If you dwell too long at the top, you might get a little uh, burnout, a little window burns out and you'll have to repair it. Okay, so I'm out of position. I'm going to rotate the part and do it all over again. Continue to rotate the part. It's moving on me a little bit. This table's not terribly flat. So I'm put some weight on it. Yeah, you can you can see it. Uh, it's running okay. Not great, but like I say, I'm running a one sixteenth tungsten pointed. I'm on DC. This is just mild steel. And I taper off, rotate again. When you get to your tack, you gotta slow down let it absorb in real well and if you do it right when you finish you you can't even tell where the tack is or was okay now that, that welded up very nicely if you have small quantities it, the best thing to do is just set it on a table maybe maybe weight it down a little better we have another little thing we call the other hand that that puts pressure on here, otherwise it starts rocking on you. But uh, overall, I had to turn it maybe five times, six times to get it to do the 360 degree weld. So like I said, if I've got small quantities, just turn it by hand, that's okay. Uh, the results are good. Uh, you could see heat build up as you'd go around. As the heat would come up, you'd see it wet out much nicer. So uh, mild steel, you don't have to preheat it. I'm using a 1 16th tungsten, so that's all you need for something like this. Now, I didn't have it set perfectly in center, and that's not uncommon. We don't have a perfect world out there, so it's not uncommon to have parts like this where you have several thousand pieces to do, and they're not exactly perfect. So we're going to try to show you how to do some semi-automatic or off-the-shelf components that you can buy uh, to rotate these parts. Now, this part, if I were to time study, it probably took me 
you know, somewhere around a minute and a half to two minutes, uh, maybe even two and a half minutes. So if you're time studying by the thousands, uh, I can cut that in half. In fact, I'll, uh, I'll do a little testing here. We, uh, we asked this company called MK Products. Uh, they're out of California. They were at the Fabtech show, and they had a product, and uh, we're going to test it. So I would like to Mr. Tigger prove it, but before I do that, we're going to take it through steels and stainless steels and aluminums. And uh, the thing about rotary turntables, they come in all sizes and shapes. They're not cheap. But you got to understand that they are precision. So if you start getting lunging of any kind, then you probably have a problem with that particular product. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this up exactly the same way. I'm going to use a rotary turntable, and we're going to do a little time study on it. So uh, let me get my gear in place, and uh, we'll show you how this works. Well, first of all, I want to thank you guys from MK for loaning this to us. Uh, without getting this equipment, we can't evaluate it, let, let uh, the welders out there know what's out there. Anyway, I, I ran this uh, at half RPM, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to see how slow it would go. Uh, without looking at the specs, I didn't know how slow it would go, but uh, actually it goes slower than half a RPM. It goes to uh, 0.3 RPMs. Now this, this little machine right here is designed to handle 300 pounds in this position. Uh, when we turn it vertical, it'll handle 150 pounds. And according to the sketch here, that 150 pounds can only be about somewhere around, I don't know, seven inches off the center of this. Now I also understand by reading through here that this machine right here comes with its own turntable and plugins and all that. But you have to buy accessories. If you're looking for a three-jaw chuck or four-jaw chuck, something like that, that becomes an accessory. Now, you can turn this machine on manually here to get it to go, and it'll go counterclockwise. Uh, most of the time, that's the way that I do it. But uh, they sent me another uh, accessory. There's a little foot control down here, and I hit it, and it, it's just a, uh, another foot control. So I've got, I've got my variable rheostat for my welding machine and I'm pressing it, and this one over here, all I'm doing is pressing it on and off. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to do numerous tests with this, um, and I wanted to thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.